Uh, hello, welcome to uh, economics of password cracking in the GPU era. Era. This actually sounds more corporate than DEF CON normally allows for, but we'll get through this. Uh, obviously, I work at SanDisk, so I use their slide deck things. So what we're going to cover today, so uh, we're just going to do a quick introduction of who I am and why we're here and why you should stay in the talk for the entire duration. Uh, we're going to cover GPU cracking, uh, like some fundamentals, 101 stuff. Uh, then we're going to get into the meat of it, all the economics of it. Uh, we're going to explain how fast and quick it is to uh, deploy. Uh, we're going to do like a little lessons learned. If you haven't noticed, I'm pretty corporate. And then we'll do a conclusion that's going to have uh, some Q&A and some afterthoughts. Oh, that. There it is, Q&A. Shameless plugs, uh, I love these. Um, these are all my sponsors. So I used to work for Atheros Communications. Uh, the CFO came to me one day and said, here's a $3,000 budget and an Excel spreadsheet that's password protected. Break into it and let me know. Get back to me when you break into it. So it cost me about $300 to break into his Excel spreadsheet, but I still had a bunch of budget, so I kept going forward. So this talk is mostly because of them. So thank you, Atheros, for giving me time, even though they don't exist anymore, it's Qualcomm now. Which brings me to my other one. So Atheros got bought out and I just cashed in all my stock options. Uh, apparently Qualcomm already has a CISO, so I didn't have any purpose over at Atheros. SanDisk needed one, so now I'm the uh, CISO over there. Uh, so I'm a technical CISO, so you shouldn't get up and run away once you hear the word CISO. If you guys don't know what that means, it's a Chief Information Security Officer. So I actually do soup to nuts. I actually do all the architectural reviews, the deployments, all that other kind of stuff. And all the boring stuff like policies and procedures and talking to C-level staff. But they continued the funds on this and we're gonna show you in a much bigger way than $3,000 later on. Uh, people of Earth, I definitely appreciate you guys. I couldn't have done this talk if you didn't uh, screw up on a consistent basis. So I appreciate that, thank you. And electricity. So like, uh, if we look at the laws of electricity, there's the path of least resistance, and uh, that kind of ties in with the people of Earth. So thank you. <laughs> Anywho, oh, uh, yeah, I got to give mad greets to my crews. Vegas 2.0, that's the people that uh, I associate with. I don't have my lab coat on today because UPS really sucks. Don't believe the commercials. They do not love logistics. Uh, DC 949, uh, you guys know all those crazy guys. The party was pretty good last night until it got shut down in concert with all the other parties in the towers. And the Cuckoo's Nest, this is the uh, private hacker space up in the uh, Redwood Hills. Um, it features 50 meg internet, dual 50 meg internet, and septic tanks. So it's kind of like a Coon Con for those of you that know what that's all about. So thank you everybody for all your efforts in there, making this happen. Oh, another shameless plug, uh, a word about RSA tokens. So uh, one of my lessons learned is you need two-factor authentication, and I was all geared up for that, and then some assholes decided to like totally let their systems get pwned. So I'm like, well, don't, if you're gonna do two-factor, don't do RSA, obviously, because that didn't work out. So what I have here is these uh, special keychains. So I don't know if you can see very well, but it would help if it's right side up. So uh, since I am the CISO and I had to redistribute 3,000 RSA tokens to all my users, and that was a pain in the ass, uh, I collected all the original tokens from my users, so they still generate numbers. And I was like, what the hell am I going to do with 3,000 RSA tokens that have no purpose because the Chinese have all of their seeds? And then I saw on the internet on attrition, somebody superimposed a bottle opener to the side of one of these as a joke. And I was like, well, screw Photoshopping. I'm just gonna like actually attach bottle openers to all my dead RSA tokens. <laughs> so. And uh, you know, normally I buy American and everything, keep our economy going and all that, but I figured since this was special, I got all my bottle openers from China. <laughs> so every single bottle opener actually says men in China on it. So what you have here is an RSA uh, bottle opener from China. So uh, I figured I'd throw some of these out to the audience. Uh, I did have 180 of them, and apparently I'm down to eight <laughs> leading up to the talk. So I'll chuck these out. They actually have some significance uh, around 2 a.m. tonight, so I won't tell you more than that. That's, I guess, a big enough clue. So if you have one of these and you're in the right place at 2 a.m., it'll be of use. Otherwise, just enjoy opening bottles of beer with your 
pointless RSA token. Some of these, I think, actually will go for the next five years. So it'll still generate numbers for five years to nothing. So unless you're Chinese and you actually have a use for it still. So, so I'll go ahead and chuck these out and then get started. Where are you, Matt? I don't want to hit you again. Oh, I almost got her. I mean... I get the back here. There you go. <laughs> you look like a girl. <laughs> oh, one more. <laughs> uh, any of you guys make it to the summit on Thursday night? Oh, what a bunch of jerks. So the summit was an EFF fundraiser. We gave out about 50 of these at the fundraiser as well. So if you were there, you got one already. All right, about me. So why should you listen to what I'm saying and all this other crap? So I got four years of credit card security. You may remember me from DEF CON 11 through 13. I did some talks on how to steal credit cards from merchants directly. I felt that everybody was talking about uh, the consumers and all the carders in the world, and nobody was talking about the businesses getting raped blind. So I talked about that for about three years. I developed a IDPS technology into code so for websites so websites that are self-healing and they detect when people are doing evil stuff and uh, go into an offensive mode for the Department of Energy which they loved it and let me research that for three years and then scrapped it so uh, if you want to FOIA that it's actually some interesting stuff um, and for the last two years I've been doing a lot of GP GPU password cracking stuff all the suit and tie crap I've been doing uh, IT security for 12 years I've been in development roles, research roles, SOC analyst roles, incident response roles, tactical, red team, tiger team, red versus blue, fill in the blank, and a bunch of holistic crap like policies and procedures and training and yearly refreshers and all that other stupid junk that you don't care about here. Uh, and the private hack space. So we have trees and servers to muse over. So uh, it's in the middle of the Redwood Forest. There's about 15 trees and about, I think we're up to 48 terabytes of storage out there um, just doing cool stuff. So if you're in the Bay Area and you want to go to this, this crazy forest resort hack space, just give me a ring. Okay, now that what you actually came here for. So sorry about all the sand disk slide things. So what is general computing? So there's a thing that people say they get confused with GPUs and general computing. So general computing just means that you have a whole bunch of tools in your arsenal. So that's where OpenCL comes in. So OpenCL is supposed to say you can program for the platform. Uh, so if you say, okay, do you have a GPU? If yes, I'm going to do stuff using your GPU. If no, do you have SSE2 instructions? If yes, I'll use that. And it'll just kind of keep going down and down. But it looks for preferential devices. So that way you don't have to sit there and, like, CUDA really sucks because you can only do map mapping routines with CUDA and nothing else. You can't say, uh, try and do SSA3, which is not as fast, but it's still useful. Um, and that's why a lot of people are migrating from, AT, uh, from NVIDIA to ATI cards. And there's some other things involved with that, but we'll get into that. Uh, what is the current state of uh, general computing and high performance computing? So the top 500, it turns out that uh, of the 100 of the top 500 that topped the list, about 80 of those now topped the list because they have uh, graphics processing units or general purpose graphics processing units, which are mostly the Tesla 2050s. So uh, we're actually seeing that like every time that that list gets republished, it just gets decimated with more GPUs. So if anybody's wondering if GPUs are gonna really stay or if they're just like a passe thing or in vogue right now, it'll be passe later. I don't think so. I think everything's gonna move over to GPUs. Another thing about GPUs that people don't understand and I always use every microphone I can to promote this. If you know what a DSP is, a digital signal processor, that's all a GPU really is. It's just sample rates, right? Something comes in and it just keeps on checking, 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 checking over and over and over again, like a really fast clock. That's the, the core. Yeah, somebody at NVIDIA will say it's a lot more than that, but when you really think about it from a, a EE perspective or a CS perspective, it's just like a really super crazy uh, FPGA or, or DSP processor. 
cloud computing. So everybody's like, hey, you know, everybody loves GPUs, so let's get into it. So Amazon Web Clusters and EC2 Elastic Cloud Computing, uh, they were the first to come out with it with the actual GPUs. The rest of these guys also have stuff. So if you want to do this stuff on your own, uh, and if you look in the CD, I have all the kit and everything you need to get started. You can be cracking passwords on other people's hardware in no time, or if you want to do bitcoins, if that's still popular, um, you can do it as well. I think at one point before the bubble burst with bitcoins, it was actually cheaper just to use an Amazon EC2 to mine bitcoins, and even though you're paying per hour, you're still getting more back once your 50 coins came up. But I think the bubble burst, and now it's just stupid to do that. It might come back if it is really a serious thing that people care about. Do I sound like I'm droning on? Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll try not to. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was dumb. Okay, um, distributed technologies. So you got distributed not in that, folding at home, SETI at home, and bitcoins. And according to the Crack Me If You Can guys, there actually will be a distributed password cracking pretty soon. I don't know if I was supposed to say it to this many people. Oops, you'll get over it. Oh, they'll get over it. But uh, that's coming soon. I think that's the crux. Like, if we look at what we're doing with password cracking, that, to me, is like the holy grail. Like, once that happens, like, if you don't have two-factor, you're dead. It's just not happening anymore. So let's, actually, let's get into actual GPU cracking. So the hardware, like I had to catch myself up on all this once he gave me $3,000. So this is the main ones out there. If you, want to, if you want to buy the top of the line thing for your Bitcoins or GPU password cracking, on the NVIDIA side, you want to use the GTX 590. All they really said was it's the same thing as the two GTX 250 series. They said, well, we couldn't figure out. 260, thank you, sir. For, no, 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 you don't even know what I'm talking about. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so the 260s, what they did was said, we have a processor and we don't know quite yet how to make it faster so let's just put two GPUs on one card and just say it's double the speed that's all the 590 is it's just two 580s crammed onto one card so uh, when they say 1024 cores it's really 512 cores per GPU so when you're doing cracking it actually breaks it out you actually see two GPUs actually crunching your numbers not one so that's a little bit of a issue and so we have here, it says times eight cells. So it's just like the uh, PS3, right? They say that they have the cell processing, so each core has eight cells. It's the same technology because NVIDIA is the one that uses that for the PS3. So there's a real problem with this, and we'll get into that later. So even though you have 8,192 streams, we'll quote that, uh, it still doesn't compete with Radeon's HD 5870, which is 1,600 cores. And there's a 5970, which they did the same thing as the 590. They just said 1,600 plus 1,600. So you just have to have a really big ass power supply to handle one card. Um, just checking my notes to see if I missed something. Oh, I guess I am supposed to talk about it here. So uh, why, do, why does everybody switch over? To, when you think of Bitcoins, I'm just gonna keep referring to that because everybody knows that they like money and they like to switch to stuff that works. So NVIDIA won out of the gate as far as cracking passwords and Bitcoins and all these other things because they had the CUDA and CUDA is just this development environment. They had a lot of examples, a lot of uh, free tech nets, a lot of webcasts, all this stuff. So everybody was able to hit the ground running. And Radeon, or Radeon, ATI had this thing called StreamKit. And StreamKit was just this gaudy, kludgy piece of crap with not really good documentation. So all the developers said, well, NVIDIA is pretty solid company and stable, and CUDA is pretty well documented. We're going to start doing that. But what people found out later on, especially when ATI started promoting OpenCL, is that you actually get a lot more performance out of the Radeons. And the reason why is, is it's the CISC versus RISC argument, right? So CISC has all these predetermined processes. You just send it in like SSE2 and all this other stuff in MMX. So you just tell it to do one thing, one instruction, and that instruction knows to do 15 others that are pre-programmed. Radeon is just like what, why everybody loved the 68K processor on the PowerPC side for the longest time. It was, well, as long as you're willing to code it, it's going to be more efficient and faster and actually get better performance. So when you look and you actually do a map function on a CUDA, it's going to look at 512 cores, and it's going to do a map across 512 cores as if there were streams. So you're, not, you're only using one cell per core instead of all eight cells. Now, just because you're not a good programmer or you just don't, really don't understand CUDA. 
Now OpenCL said, we don't care. As long as it's a stream, you can address it. So now you're writing the same exact code in OpenCL and you're saying, go across 1,600 cores and do 1,600 process map functions simultaneously. So that's a lot faster fi than 512 map functions. So that's why it's important to kind of point that out of why ATI, and this is getting to like a really bits and bytes level, why ATI is better than NVIDIA, not because their logo is red and the other one is green, but that's why everybody's moving over. And if NVIDIA doesn't change their processes, if they don't change their architecture, they're gonna lose this war and it's gonna be ATI that's gonna be the market leader and save AMD for a little while. So, what else? Oh, we just went over all that crap. Okay. I should probably pay attention to my next slide thing here. Okay, cracking software, what's out there? So, uh, OCL Hashcat, I put it at the top because right now it's a top contender. IG Hashcat, which is Igor from uh, Russia, he's got one. And then the CUDA Multiforcer, which is missing in action as of today. Are you Bitweasel? Well, we're, your website's been down forever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, you would have been number one. I, so a little background real quick. I, this is the first time I'm meeting this guy. So I, I actually partnered up with, uh, can you stand up for a second, Weasel? <laughs> so, so. So this is the, so this is a funny story. While I'm at Atheros, I, I'm not a CUDA programmer, and I need to find a CUDA programmer, and I had the $3,000 budget. So I call up Bitweasel, and I say, if I just buy you a bunch of brand new cards, can you do some exclusive programming, or at least stave off the code to other people and just give it to me early? And he said, sure, no problem. Next you know, I drop shipped a couple of uh, video cards so that he can get the multi-card thing going. And everything's happy-go-lucky, and then all of a sudden, the website was missing for two months when I was making these slides. And I'm like, what happened to Bitweasel? And apparently... I don't know, you were on a drunken stupor or something? Uh, no, actually, it was a server that I tried to upgrade the Ubuntu release on remotely, and uh, it was just like, that didn't work. So, a server failure. So you can write CUDA programming, but you can't keep a server up. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So as of right now, you're in third place behind these guys as far as uh, your efficiency in your algorithm. So, and I'm kind of an asshole that way. I don't mind saying that right directly to you. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so, and actually my slides actually show you still ahead, but I didn't revise them yet. But, uh, well good, maybe later on this weekend I can do some joint stuff with him and show you guys the most efficient code. So CUDA Multiforcer comes pre-packaged on um, Backtrack 4, is it also on 5? Is Pure Hate in the room? Are you auditing mine and seeing if I'm full of shit or not? No, I guess not. Oh, oh. Uh, speaking of which, is F5 here or F9? Please step to the front, please. That was redundant. So she's part of the scavenger hunt, and I'm supposed to give her a lot of shit. Otherwise, Siviac will bust my balls. So if you can just sit up here with me. Don't worry, I put on deodorant this morning. Thank you. Anyways, uh, so CUDA Multiforce, so this is the one I started off with, and this is the one I was able to actually crack a shit ton of passwords with, so thank you for that bit, Weasel. But right now, OCL Hashcat, which is run by Adam something or other, um, he's in the current lead because his ATI card with the uh, OCL, which is the uh, OpenGL framework. So this is my buddy for the duration of the talk. And her mic's not on, but she says hi. Uh, current benchmarks, so we're going to go over benchmarks, they're all going to be based on NTLM, Windows Active Directory, MD5 for the websites, and small, salt baits passwords, and this one's for you, smart, where'd you go, where's Jackie, anybody watch Epic Mealtime, yes. yeah. you know, <laughs> salt baits passwords, smart, okay, you guys in the audience get it, that know that stuff. So what's in a mask? So okay, let's talk about this. This is what I really love about password cracking is how stupid humans are in the path of the last resist least resistance. So now that you guys know earlier in the year, and I'm gonna start picking this up faster because I think I'm way behind on my time. Uh, and we have a special thing. We don't have a live demo, but we have a consolation prize for you guys. So don't get up and run away because the live demo's not here. If you're a dude or a lesbian, it's really worth it to you to stick around. 
hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So, uh, so uh, at my company, SanDisk, or any other company, and now apparently uh, Gawker, because they got smart, was, hey, you need an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, a special character. It has to be minimum of eight characters, right? Well, this sounds all hunky-dory and dandy, and even pure hate. I'm kind of biting on his style a little bit because he got into this, and Bitweasel came up with a custom uh, a cracking uh, tool to help out with this, where you said, okay, uppercase, lowercase, numbers. What do humans do? Oh, I got to do an uppercase. You know what? I'm going to make that my first character. It's going to be uppercase. Just because I got to remember that the first one's uppercase because they're making me do an uppercase. Well, if 99% of my organization, and I don't work at Atheros now, I can tell you this, 99% of Atheros started off with uppercase before I came in. And I was like, guys, I just cracked all your passwords in like two hours because your eight character password now went to a seven character because I only checked uppercase in the front. And so we actually put in the GPO policy there. You no longer can use an uppercase character that is required at the beginning of your password. So doing something simple like that actually saves you a lot of grief. It pisses off users because they're like, Christ, now I have to start putting my password underneath my keyboard again. <laughs> so, <laughs> because they just can't think. And we'll talk about what really means about that. So that's what we say is what's in a mask. So when you actually say, okay, I have a 10 character password, it's really strong. Well, yeah, if it starts with an uppercase and ends with a number, and then every nine, 90 days when I make you change it, you, your last character went from one to two to three, or even the special characters on the keyboard, you went from a pound to an at, or a bang to an at to a pound to a dollar sign. It's like, okay, I'm pretty sure the Chinese could figure that out, you idiot. So uh, we actually had to put all these really specially crafted GPO um, rules in to kind of combat this kind of natural path of least resistance of users. So that mask, so you can say, okay, we're cracking passwords, we're doing brute force, yada, 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 it's taking forever, eight characters takes 23 hours, that's a long time, you know. You can start using masks and now seven characters takes an hour and 15 minutes, especially, and with the mask, your mileage varies, it might be about eight hours to get every masked seven character password, but that'll get 75% of your passwords. So if any of you are in the crack me if you can contest, that's what we call in the business a clue, okay? <laughs> So, and they're probably like reeling over there like, what an asshole, he just told like 200 people how to break into our whole contest, but they'll get over it. So, um, that gets into the passphrase concept. So, um, and interestingly enough, I was in India for two weeks trying to convince them to use better passwords and they were scared that I was making them use 10 characters. And I said, well, you know what? Think of a passphrase, right? I only eat tandoori chicken on Saturdays, even when the wife complains. Yeah, now you use the first letter of all those things and you permutate I's for bang signs and A's for at signs and that sort of thing and remember to put a capital letter in there somewhere. And suddenly you're just saying in your head, I only eat tandoori chicken on Saturdays even when the wife complains. And you have a really, really complex password that you can just say in your head and just use the first letter and make sure you have permutations on some of those letters. And all of a sudden that's a really freaking good idea, you know. So I think that's like the crux of everything. You can probably leave right now if you want to miss out on the lesbian action. Um, that's really like the whole point of me being up on stage today. Two factor in you. So you guys all got your cool passes to that thing at 2 a.m. If you didn't, sorry. Oh yeah, and there's a giggle there. We already talked about that. So uh, I'm mad props to Google. I mean, you can love them or hate them and maybe they're not doing evil and maybe they are doing evil, who knows. But they're the first email client that's public that gave away a free two-factor authentication uh, option. And I use it. Um, so even when I'm on my computers I use every day, I still use it just as a matter of course. It's just a really freaking good idea, you know, especially if they're giving it to you for free. So um, even in our organization, we're prepping everybody to do two-factor. And if you work at Qualcomm, any Qualcomm employees here that want to admit you work for Qualcomm? You guys all know that your VPN requires two factor and all your other shit in house requires two factor, right? Nod your heads. Yeah, they're nodding their heads. Um, because Josh like just absolutely requires that over there. Um, and he's like hardcore about the two factor. And it's just a good idea, you know, and there's, uh, we'll talk about why that matters right now actually. God, I've been drinking too much. Secure auth, uh, this is actually, or semantic VIP. So I don't talk about RSA anymore as a good two factor option just because like the Chinese just cut through them like butter. Um, and they're probably doing it again as we speak. 
So semantic VIP, uh, that's the old uh, uh, VeriSign uh, two-factor authentication. That's saying, you know, it's on your phone. So on your smartphones, you can have a two-factor here. And the thing I always tell people is, oh, you don't like two-factor authentication? Think about your smartphone, right? How often do you lose this versus your car keys? So go ahead, just keep this around, lose your car keys, and you have your second factor. So stop bitching about me making you carry around your phone that you're already carrying. So you can do that with semantic VIP. You can do it with RSA as well, but it's RSA, so. And my rep's gonna get so mad at me if she's listening to this right now. Uh, secure auth, secure auth, uh, anybody have Chase banking online? You can admit it, only one will admit that they use Chase. Come on, who had Washington Mutual? You're all poor bastards in here. <laughs> I got Washington Mutual accounts or Chase now. So when you try and log into your account, it says, well, you have your number on file. Can I text message you a four-digit code just to make sure it's you? And that's what Secure Auth does. They're the ones that are behind that nuts and bolts on the chase, and you're going to start seeing it in a lot of other places. USAA does it today. So for all you former military and jerks that just used your parents' military experience to get your USAA accounts, they have to, yeah, that guy. They have two-factor authentication as well because they get it. You know, our military might not get other things, but they get two-factor authentication for their retired employees for, or their active employees for USAA. Everybody knows what USAA is, right? Okay, so for your foreigners, that's a credit union that's exclusively given out to all of our uh, military forces and their families. And if you don't know what a credit union is, that's a place that's not an evil bank. They're all nonprofits. They're not allowed to churn a profit for personal gain. So, which they happen to be the largest nonprofit. They're a Fortune 10 company. So, but nonprofit Fortune 10 company. So they has they have two-factor authentication. That's a, just a really good idea. Um, and all these apps are free in the App Store, in the BlackBerry Store, in the uh, market, the Android market. You can just download these apps, and uh, you can just demand of your employees or in, of your companies and uh, of uh, your vendors that you use, I need two-factor. PayPal has two-factor for free. E-Trade has two-factor for free. USAA has two-factor for free. Start pushing everybody else. At SanDisk, what we do is say, we have two-factor and you're partnered with all your banks, guess what? The same token you're using to authenticate with us, you can recycle that for your bank. Now you're not carrying around like this freaking janitor's key of RSA tokens for all of your different things. This is for my Wells Fargo, this is for my porn site, this is for my work. You know, you can do it all in one token. All right, I'm done pitching it to you. Let's get into the economics. How cheap is it to break passwords? Pretty cheap. So a locally hosted box is my recommendation, um, as long as you don't mind uh, a slightly higher, higher power bill, and it ends up being about $15 more a month for a typical resident here in the United States. Um, private clouds are also a really good idea. We'll talk about that as well. Um, and local dis distribution, and that's getting into the whole SETI at home thing where you can have all the computers in your environment, especially if you're a development house like SanDisk. We have a lot of GPUs just laying around in all of our development boxes. They're like, we want the top of the line thing, and we're not going to use that GPU ever. I'm like, well, okay, I'll use your spare cycles while you're having that box doing nothing, okay, and crack your own passwords. Congratulations, you lose. <laughs> and so that's like, yeah, the custom screensavers and everything you know and love. Public clouds, Amazon. Uh, I was going to have a demo for you, but I don't have it ready. Oh, here's my live demo. <laughs> I didn't have a live demo, so I gave you guys girls pillow fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's DJ Jackalope there, and that's Beer Betty there. <laughs> oh, you missed out on the lesbian part. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> okay. And there is your, there's your live demo of a girl's pillow fighting. If you have those RSA tokens, you'll see the uh, Encore production at 2 a.m. somewhere. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Oh, uh, a word about last bit Nelcom Soft. It's uh, definitely pound equals. So, um, last bit is the exact same thing as Alcom Soft. Have you guys heard of these guys? Like on Wired and uh, 
ArcSoft and all, or ArcSight and all them, they did these exposés on them about uh, 18 months ago, and they said, hey, now you can pay somebody to do your uh, password cracking with GPUs. Yeah, uh, hopefully they don't take me out back and shoot me because they are Russians. But um, these are both the same exact company, and it's the same guy, and he like will just take your money and run. I had to do chargebacks. I used an American Express, which has really good chargeback coverage. So I was able to recover the money that I lost from my $3,000 budget because I was just trying anything I could. I was like, I just want to show this guy I can crack his password. So I tried buying the Elcomsoft software. Didn't work. You know, I had a brand new GPU in there and it says, I don't see your GPU. So if you're thinking about using these services, I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's crap. It's rubbish. So if you're thinking about it or you already purchased it, get your money back. And if you're in the room, guys, sorry, your stuff sucks. So the best thing I suggest is like a local box. Um, you can do the Amazon web cluster, and this is how this works in my mind. If you got 10 days on your hand to crack a password and $3,000, just buy a local box. If you don't have 10 days, you need to have it done today, you do that vertical versus horizontal thing. You know, vertically it takes 10 days to crack a password, or you can just spend the same $3,000 and go horizontal and just get a crap ton of GPUs at Amazon and have them all cracking simultaneously, and you can have it done in about 23 hours. It's gonna be the same $23,000 or $3,000. The only difference is on a single box, you did that once and you can keep doing it again and again and again. It just takes 11 days for eight passwords. As opposed to like, I just have a project and I just need to crack something and move on with my life and I'll never crack a password again. Then I would say, just use Amazon. But if you're gonna do it for, you know, checking the strength of your employee's passwords like I have to, you get a single box. And we'll show you what my box looks like in just a minute. And we said distributed, non-existent. Well, according to Crack Me If You Can, it will be existing pretty soon. And uh, I want to work with them to do a Chrome slash Firefox extension so you can also do like distributed storage of cracked passwords. Who? I don't know about that. There's a GPU, CPU, distributed password cocker called Durda. I don't know. D-U-R-D-A-N-E-L. Okay. Bitweasel is questioning your authority on this subject. I'm not aware of this. Is it actually still developed? We'll talk about that offline. Don't forget there's a track one Q&A. So I'm just droning on, I'm sorry. If you want to know more details, we can get into that in the Q&A. Uh, my thing says I'm good on time, but I'm still good on time. Where are you, goon, that's supposed to be monitoring me? 17 minutes, okay. Oh, here's like a really, really, I, I don't know how well you guys can see this up there. I know it was like really scrunched and everything. But uh, what I went ahead and did with my budget after I cracked his password, he gave me a bigger budget, was bought a shit ton of <laughs> GPUs <laughs> just to see what the actual efficiency of every single one was uh, against uh, the CUDA multi-forcer that Bitweasel did. And I also did some uh, uh, just basic crunching. So if you look at this, this, is, this slide is in your CD, and you can actually go onto our website once it's up, uh, cuckoosnest.net. It'll be live in two weeks. You can actually get the live, latest updates on this. This actually tells you your bang for your buck. So in the very bottom right corner there, you're gonna see those gold things. That's your bang for buck for either keys versus dollars, keys versus core, keys versus memory. And all a key is, is a password. Like, we just refer to it as a key, but that just means a password that we tried and it worked or it didn't work. Silver is second place and bronze is bronze, third place. So that's kind of how it breaks out. And these numbers actually are always, I tried to do bleeding edge. These numbers change so frequently because Newegg and Amazon and, and Fry's are always competing and trying to keep their prices lower and things change dramatically. But at the time of these slides made about four weeks ago, um, this was the current dollar amounts for each of these um, GPUs and the efficiency of each one. So right now, if you have the ATI, HD 5970, which I think is in shortage. Like a lot of people didn't have it anymore. Like everybody wanted them for Bitcoin generation that like they just ran out of GPUs. So if you can find one that's actually the most efficient one, the biggest bank for your buck with the OCL hashcat. 
and maybe that'll change after I have an offline discussion with Weasel over here. And he's op working on OpenCL currently. Very good. So we'll get back to that. Um, so this is what SanDisk is going to do. This is what I submitted to my CIO <laughs> as a good idea. <laughs> so <laughs> what I told him was, how would you like to have a computer on the top 100 of the top 500 supercomputers? <laughs> and he said, what, where are you going to save me money somewhere else before I give you this budget? So I ended up saving him about $225,000 on our pen test by going with a boutique shop with some personal friends of mine. So he's like, well, you saved me $200,000. That's clearly not $200,000. You can have that money. So hopefully by December, we'll actually have this live and working, and I'll actually be able to show you this live. I'm going to do a VPN in maybe from... Uh, ShmooCon or something like that, and actually show you uh, 80 GPUs cracking 150 trillion passwords per second for uh, $52,000. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the GPU count is 40, but that doesn't, it's actually 80 because like I said before, the, the 59 uh, or the GTX 590s are two GPUs each. So yeah, so actually, yeah, it's 136.8 trillion passwords per second is what we have. But if I can work with Bitweasel and get that more efficient, maybe we can make that faster. And it's actually going to be, I know I just told you guys ATI is the best bet, but it's going to be um, NVIDIA simply because we want to put this computer on the top 500 list just to be assholes. And um, the way to do that is with Linpack, and Linpack only supports CUDA GPUs, which means you have to use NVIDIA. Unless somebody wants to write me a Linpack for ATI cards, then I'll, I'll go with that. That'll actually bring this cost from 52000 down to $38,000 for a top 100 <laughs> supercomputer. I'll pay you. If you can save me money, I'll actually pay you the difference just to make it happen. <laughs> so I have no problem throwing money at problems, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, that at, if you were here for the beginning, I am a CISO. <laughs> so if I can't figure it out, I'll throw money on it. Either hire somebody or do outside development just to get it done. So um, that's the problem you have when you have like a former black hat now running the show, where if he can't figure out the answer, he's going to find somebody who's going to figure it out and pay him well to do it. So just keep that in mind if you have some gigs and you want to pitch something to me. Uh, if it sounds like a good idea and it makes sense for Sandus to do it, I'll pay you to do it, and you know you can take your credit, but we're gonna totally enjoy the fruits of your labor, and then later we'll open source it because you know it's my call. So, <laughs> so not to spin my own wheels, but you guys do finally have one of your own in the hiring ranks of a Fortune 500 company, and I'm gonna abuse my power until they kick me out. <laughs> All right, moving along. Uh, so this is the brute force calculator. So I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the brute force calculator here with my really awesome screen resolution. So this is also on the disk. If it's not, just ask me, and I'll get you one. Um, and I have the latest numbers here. So this is what I did a cut and paste of. But you can essentially. This is totally ripped off of some site that did this, and I just retooled it for the latest numbers. What you can say is, I want an eight-character password. What's my um, time to live if I decide to use an eight-character password? And it's 10 days. So you have 10 days with, uh, let me show you the current cost down here, $2,000. It was $3,000, now it's $2,000. If you don't think your password is worth more than $2,000, just have it be eight characters. Because it'll be cracked, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's NTLM or MD5 or SHA1 or even SHA256, because it's just cracking passwords. Um, it takes about 10 days and $2,000 if you have an eight character password. Um, and like I said, you can do it in 23 hours for $3,000 with Amazon Web Cluster. What? This is 92 character set, so anything that's printable on your keyboard, period. Uh, is it the crazy ones where you do like an alt, shift, special character? No. Um, who's doing that? Nobody. Okay. 0.01%. 0.01%. And congratulations, you defeated my thing. But for the rest of you jerks in the audience, <laughs> which is everybody else, you're screwed if you're having it. So think about your Google password. Think about um, your PayPal password. Uh, if you got eight characters 
And uh, you say, well, you know, it's Google, it's PayPal, it's all these other people. Gawker got hacked two years ago, December, January, December 08, January 09. Google admitted that they had a problem and some of their Gmail accounts got bro broken into. That's why they have two-factor authentication, okay? So if you think that all these places, especially Yahoo, I know the new CISO over there, and let me tell you, make sure it's over eight characters, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Justin. Um, so just think about any of your passwords. 10 days, that's what your password is worth, that eight characters. It's done with. Now here's the surprising thing, because this is a password calculator. I can type whatever I want into it. Nine. What does that work out to be? Anybody can guess? It's 10 days for eight. I got two months, one year, 10 days. No. Surprisingly, just adding one character is 2.6 years. This is not a linear thing. This is an exponential thing. So just adding, just saying, okay, I can figure out one new character to memorize just saves your ass that much more. So guess what? At SanDisk, since I'm still trying to train people before we go to passphrases, everybody's required to have nine characters. You know? Yeah, it's one more than eight, and everybody thinks it's superficial. You know, the proof is in the pudding. 2.6 years for $2,000. Now, of course, if I throw more money at it, you know, like, say, I don't know, $52,000, <laughs> that number will go down, right? So let's look at what that number goes down to. $52,000. 18 days. Just to remind you guys, the number two supercomputer on the top 500 list is a Chinese supercomputer with GPUs. And let me articulate my voice a little. A Chinese supercomputer is number two on the list. As of two months ago, it was number one. The Japanese took over. So the Chinese are getting your eight characters and your nine characters. Supercomputer status? In less than a minute. So let's revisit that discussion about two-factor authentication, right? I mean, that's why we're here. That's the whole point of my talk is um, I got yelled at at ShmooCon during the panel that my answer to everything was two-factor, and they were saying it cost a lot of money. Let me remind you, PayPal does it for free. USA does it for free. Google does it for free. Your company already has it. Are they sharing your tokens with third-party vendors in a secure manner? Federated passwords, right? Open ID, all that stuff. Are they doing that to make it happen so that we all can move to two-factor? It's just in the age of Chinese espionage, you just have to have two-factor. That's just the way it is. Whether you work at a private company, whether you work for the ACLU, you know, whether you work somewhere else that uh, they care about your stuff, you, know, you just have to have two-factor. That's just the long and the short of it. Anybody want to see what, my, uh, what the Qualcomm's 12-character looks like? I think it starts getting into galactic years. So Qualcomm requires 12 characters. Oh, if, do they require it yet? You two guys over there? I know he was talking about it, and I was like, wow, what a jerk, 12 characters. <laughs> Start inspecting people's keyboards now. So you see it's all pounded out here already, right? So it gets into 0.01 galactic years. And yes, for all those curious, galactic years is a legitimate thing. But yeah, it takes 21,000 centuries. I mean, that's a long time. And how about those supercomputers in China? Yeah, for now, you're okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but uh, if you haven't noticed, with GPUs in the high-performance computing realm these days, guess what? You know, like five years ago, we were only doing one petabyte as the number one computer. We're now at 320 petabytes or not petabytes, petaflops, thank you. Peta, we're at 120 petaflops per second as the number one computer. So in just five years, we've just more than 100% growth in that field. So how long do you think that's gonna last? So we have to start thinking about things like better salt, two-factor authentication, that sort of thing. I'm running really low on time, if not out of it, five minutes. I don't know if how many more slides I have. I'm just gonna buzz through these real quick. Yeah, we had a pillow fight instead of live demos. If you really want to know more about it. 
Oh, NTLM is dead, if you haven't heard. So if your Active Directory domain administrators are still using NTLM to do federated passwords back and forth, throw something heavy at them, preferably a brick, and, and tell them to move over to Kerbos. So uh, yeah, and let's learn from Gawker, Sony, and others, you know, or how I got effed in the A with a D, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's not even federal prison. I mean, that's like burrito up the ass Mexican status right there. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, you got to really think about it. Uh, you know, Gawker, I mean, the guys that just pwned everybody in Silicon Valley got pwned themselves. So how many of you shared that password with all your other passwords? And you don't have to raise your hand. Just think about it in your head how dumb you were. Okay? So uh, Sony, you know, we all had our PlayStation Online accounts. We can all admit it, you know. They said that your credit cards weren't stolen. They were stolen. Come on, let's not joke ourselves. Your credit card wasn't stolen, but you get one free year of credit monitoring service. But don't worry, it wasn't stolen. <laughs> okay? And I do have some buddies over there, and they can eat a bag of something. So, <laughs> a little sidebar on that. Like, two-thirds of their security team actually got fired over that. Because when they came back online, and like 30 seconds later, they got repwned. And they're like, oh, okay, I get it. You guys are all fired. You know? <laughs> So, so think about that when you guys got on for a minute, changed your password to the secure password that got pwned again, that you use for all your more secure things, you know. So, I mean, that's really my big push for two-factor. So, definitely, like, try and figure out multiple passwords. And this gets into the thing of password safes. Use a really good password, maybe even a two-factor authentication password for your iron key or other technologies that are out there. And then you can have some unruly 32 character long special character thing that you can cut and paste somewhere else. As long as you're not using the password to get into your password safe for all this other stuff, it makes a better sense to do that. And uh, if it gets pwned and then there's these public lists that people can GPU password crack like Gawker and Sony, you're not going to be that idiot that's got the eight character password, right? So no offense, I keep on calling you guys idiots and you came to my talk. Uh, and we just talked about that. Salting passwords. I was going to do a, 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 what do you call it? Conan O'Brien. In the year 2000. Uh, yeah, there it is, yeah. I practiced that all year just to not do it. Um, so uh, we will say, as far as that's concerned, uh, like I said, supercomputers are only as exponential as we're seeing with GPU password crack, with, with the, the complexity of these passwords. So really think about that as far as what your passwords are, what your password policies are. Even if you're an individual contributor at your company, you can still come back and say, here's my password calculator. Don't listen to me because I'm just some schmo that you don't care about that's just doing all your grunt work. Listen to the calculator. You know, it doesn't tell any lies. If you are a mover and a shaker in your company, make it happen, you know. Start doing all these educational things. Show these slides to the people in your company and say, no, this is how you're effed in the A with the D, you know? <laughs> and I'll be quite frank with you guys, like, this is a SanDisk slide. I had this conversation with the C-level staff there, and I did not remove that out of this slide. I told, you know, the CIO, he's going to get effed in the A with a D <laughs> if he doesn't change his policies, you know? That's how serious I am about it. And my point of coming up here and just babbling on to you guys is to kind of make you just as serious as I am. Uh, quantum computing, when that happens, we all can just pack it up and go home. <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you're not on two-factor by then, you're just effed. Like, seriously. I don't even have, like, a clever, uh, uh, witty thing to say for that. You know, I mean, you're just going to have just, like, a bukkake fest, like, 24-7. <laughs> just, like, in and around your mouth. Okay? So... <laughs> And my fiance is just looking at me like, you did not just do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so think about that. And that's any second now, right? IBM and Toshiba and Samsung are like on the verge of quantum. So think about that. Conclusion, questions and answers. I think, uh, sorry, I can take, am I out of time already? Am I a jerk? Okay, I can take one question and then, then remind you guys that there's a Q&A track one near here, and you can ask me a bunch of more questions. Sorry that I just kind of carried on. So who's got the first hand for a question? 
That guy right there. Stand up. What's your name? Okay, his name is Skunkworks apparently because he can't listen to me. Skunkworks, what is your question? Application specific integrated circuits. You're talking about FPGAs? So integrated circuits is very similar to FPGAs. It's the same thing as GPUs because you're making a purpose-built purpose uh, embedded solution. Uh, it's getting, I think the costs right now are prohibitive for that. But later on, oh yeah, yeah, thank you very much everybody.